My dear friend in Christ, there was a man who grumbled that he did not have a good pair of shoes, and then the Lord showed him someone who did not have legs. My dear friend in Christ, happiness is born out of contentment, and contentment is being grateful for what we have without worrying about what we don't have. Yes, real contentment is being grateful for what we have without worrying about what we don't have. The perpetually happy people are grateful people. When we constantly think and thank God for what we have and what He has already blessed us with, then we discover true happiness. In the old Anglo-Saxon language, being thankful also meant being thinkful. Yes, being thankful also meant being thinkful. One can even find the words think and thank inscribed in many of the Cromwellian churches in England. Now here's a story about a little boy who wrote a letter to God. He put it in an envelope addressed to God and he just dropped it in the post box. While sorting letters, a postal employee, curious as he was, opened the letter and it read, Dear God, my name is Jimmy. I'm eight years old. My dad passed away and my mom is having a tough time in looking after me and my sister. Please send me $500. Touched by the letter, the postal employee circulated the letter among the staff and they made a generous contribution of $300. The $300 was sent to the boy's address. And a week later, the post office received another envelope from the same boy addressed to God. And this is what the letter read. Dear God, thank you so much for the $300. But next time, please make sure you send it directly to my home as the post office has deducted $200 as commission. My dear friend in Christ, the people of Israel who suffered slavery at the hands of the Egyptians for generations were delivered by the Lord and led away from Egypt by Moses and Aaron. But there came a point in time in life where they grumbled angrily against Moses and Aaron. And this is what they said. They said it is better for us to go back to Egypt and die there. We have this in the book of Numbers chapter 14. They even grumbled against the food, that is manna, that God provided them. They did not think and thank. They were not grateful to God for delivering them from a wretched life of slavery and torture. They became a discontented lot. We all have a past where there may be something to thank God about. When we think about this past and become thankful, the present becomes a moment of joy and the future looks hopeful. St. Paul says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. The first letter of Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. Jesus himself was constantly thankful. Jesus gave thanks to the Heavenly Father before every miracle. Jesus thanked the Heavenly Father at the Last Supper with his disciples. Let me end with this. An evangelist, Charles Spurgeon, was robbed on the streets of London. He returned home to tell his wife, I thank God. The robber took my money, not my life. I thank God. I did not carry much money. The rest was left at home. And I thank God, I was not the robber. Yes, my dear friend in Christ, to thank, we have to think. Think of our past and the blessings God has given us. Let us think and thank. May you have a good and godly day.